Hey y'all, my name is Priscilla and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the try a chapter tag. So the try a chapter tag I think has been done so many times I've seen so many people do it and I don't really know where it originated from or what the rules are. But usually what you do is you pick a couple of books that maybe you want to read or maybe you want to prioritize or maybe you're not sure about and you read up to a certain point, a certain number of pages, a certain chapter or number of chapters, and you really are able to hone in on whether you want to read them right away or maybe later or maybe not at all. So a number of reasons why I'm doing this, I am going on vacation pretty soon and I only want to carry one hardcover, one big book, chunky book to read while traveling. Something that I can really dive into and that maybe doesn't take a lot of brain power. Traveling actually gives me a lot of anxiety and I really like getting lost in a story. And also I am really falling behind on my anticipated reads for this year. So all the books that I have are actually anticipated highly by me. And I want to figure out if I really want to read them or not and how soon I want to get to them because a number of them are actually from the library and are going to be uh, due pretty soon and I need to get to them. Let's talk about the books. So the first book that I have is Black Leopard Red Wolf by James Marlin. This is a uh, African Game of Thrones. Did I get you? But to my credit, I know that I mentioned that in my video, but I mentioned that because Marlin James sent that in an interview. So his agent needs to do better and not say that shit because yeah, stop saying that these are other versions of well beloved stories like they can stand alone on their own. But anyway, this book is supposed to be like kind of literary fiction kind of fantasy about a boy that goes missing and a man named Trekker that is on this mission to find him. And I've heard a lot of mixed things about this book at this point. A lot of the reviews that I've seen that I've heard about this book have been this is not going to be for everyone. There's a lot of gratuitous sex, misogyny, terrible things, rape, um, assault that happen in this story that I think are just not for me. So whenever people say that this is not going to work for everyone, I feel like they're talking to me because I don't think this will work for me, but I need to figure that out. So I kind of want to give it a good shot. I'm using this as an opportunity to see how I really feel about his writing. The next book that I have is a library book that I have checked out twice and that I have failed to get to twice. Um, that is The Night Tiger and this is by, wow, the name is covered by library tag. Do better libraries. I, I don't know the author's name now. This is a book that takes place in Malaysia. I believe it's sort of historical fiction, sort of like magical realism, sort of super shiny because of that glare. I've been meaning to get to it, haven't quite yet. So gonna give this a good try. The next books I didn't actually talk about on my channel too much yet, but are both Latinx YA stories. Those are actually both adults. So we have a good mix here. Okay, so I also have With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a YA contemporary that follows uh, Afro-Latinx main character who has aspirations of going to culinary school, but has a lot of obstacles in her, in her way because she is a mother, a teenage mother, actually. I love Acevedo's writing. I don't know why like this is hasn't been higher on my TBR but I need to get to it and I have a feeling that this is going to be the one that I'm going to pick but I'm going to give it like an equal shot with the other books too. The last book that I have is Don't Date Raza Santos. This is a YA contemporary that follows a Cuban American main character and I've heard that this is about um, she's sort of cursed but also trying to save her town I think something like that. Most of what I've heard about this has actually been over on Twitter. Uh, the Latinx book club and Latinx book Twitter authors and reviewers have all been hyping this book so much. And it sounds like something that I would love and am and super in the mood to read this time of the year. I'm kind of pulling for this one and with the fire on high, but we'll see what I'm in the mood for. So that's my plan. So I, today is Sunday, tomorrow is Monday. I'm actually off tomorrow and then I leave on Tuesday. So my goal is to read at least a chapter from each of these. I actually haven't looked through, so I don't even know how those books are set up but if possible, a chapter from each of those four books. So we'll see how well these mesh with me. I plan on documenting that the next two days and seeing how they fare with me. So let's see how that goes. Okay, y'all, so this is what we are looking at. Where do I wanna start with this? I kinda wanna start with Red, Le uh, Red Leopard, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, because I am the most motivated right now. And this is probably the most out of my wheelhouse. So I think this is where we're gonna start first. So. Here we go. Reading. Ready, set, go. Okay, y'all. 
I didn't mean to check in so soon, but <sighs> I didn't realize that this book is set up in parts and I'm not going to be reading this whole first part in this tag. Like, what the hell? There's like three pages of characters. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, this is the worst angle, isn't it? Yeah, this is pretty bad. Sorry. So the first part is a dog, a cat, a wolf, and a fox. And the first page, casual mention of bestiality. Not here for it, but okay. Like, oh, uh, hopefully it gets better. We'll see. So I tried to angle this where it wasn't such a weird angle. Don't know if it's really much better, but so I just finished reading chapter one and part of chapter two because I wanted to get a little bit more sense of the tone and of the writing style in this. And I don't think that I'm going to be choosing this one as a book to prioritize on a trip. The writing is really, really nice. Like I really like how lush and how descriptive the author is of the setting of the people. So the first chapter is from Tracker's perspective. He is in prison in a cell and he's talking to a priest or an inquisitor. He, he calls him both and he's telling him about a mission that he had to go get a king pretty much. And there's this really cool part when he's like describing walking on a river that is actually a wall or that like turns downward and he doesn't know if he's able to breathe underwater or if he just goes through it or what happens but there's these fish women that lead him to this village that is really cool like stuff like that makes me want to read more into it makes me want to give it a chance and the writing style is very like grim and dirty like the writing style is very gritty it's very brutal like i can tell that there's going to be a lot of violence that there's going to be a lot of genitalia <laughs> like there's descriptions of something to a i think the word he used was female clit so there's that and then of course i told you about that first scene where there's bestiality or mention of bestiality not actually like on the page but i can tell there's going to be like stuff like that like he pulls someone's eye out in the first chapter so stuff like that but i think what most makes me not want to pick this up on a trip like not want to prioritize this right away is the meandering narrative like this guy's in prison and just talking and I remember when I saw Marlon James sign this book when I heard him speak here in Houston he spoke about how he wanted to tell a story from an African perspective with African culture but also with the narrative style because in the west we're used to narrative styles that are one way but in African narrative styles many of them are told from the perspective of tricksters and i really get that sense from tracker like i don't really believe half if anything what he's saying and he's talking to like a guy that's holding him in prison so i can see why he would talk like that but at the same time it, it's so meandering that i am already losing focus i am already thinking of other things while i'm trying to focus on this that's not good for me to read on a trip i will feel very anxious and not fall into this so this is probably going to be a soft dnf for me i will probably pick it up when i get back but for now i think i'm going to pass on this one because i feel like that was really heavy that was taking a lot of brain power for me to read right now. So I really want to read something a little bit lighter. So I think I'm going to go with either with the fire on high or don't date, Ro don't date Rosa Santos. So why was that so hard to say? Uh, I think I'm going to go with one of these two because uh, I know I, I have a really strong feeling that I'm going to love these. So I want something lighter right now to finish off for day one of this little tag that I'm doing. So of the two, I think I'm going to go with Don't Date Rosa Santos. I'm feeling this one right now. So let's go ahead and get that started. I read about 20 pages of Red, Bla uh, Red Black Leopard, Red Wolf. God, I can't get that title right. I will probably get it right by the end of this video. But I read about 20 pages into that. So for this one, I'm going to try to read at least 20 pages or two chapters, whatever comes first, and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so I'm back for another update. I just finished the first two chapters of Don't Date Rosa Santos and ooh, this is so cute. I 
really love this so far. So in the first chapter, we find out that Rosa is kind of at a crossroads in her life. She is, I think she says she's in her last year of high school and she is applying to colleges. And she really wants to go to this college that has a study abroad program in Cuba. And that is really important to her because all that she knows of Cuba is from her family. She knows the story of how her mom came to the States in a boat pregnant with her. And because her dad's not in her life, because her mom's not in her life as much, she only knows about Cuba from her community. And she's really excited about it and about learning Spanish, her Spanish getting better, and about her culture firsthand. And she tells some of her family and some of them are supportive, but one of them is like very against it because the Cuban government people, I guess, only care about tourists now, not so much people. I feel that. I feel that real hard. And I feel how she wants to be a bridge, a bridge between her family, that uh, their uh, struggles and their, their journey to her means something. So I feel that a lot. And in the second chapter, there is a new threat. Um, their big summer festival, their big festival they're on a coastal town as well in Florida, is threatened to be canceled because pretty much of gentrification. Someone has bought out the pier, the area, they're going to build some high rises. And the community is meeting together and trying to come up with a plan. And Rosa is very vocal about wanting to go forward and use it as a fundraiser and continue on with the plan. And of course, there's this very broody love interest introduced named Alex who has a bunch of tattoos. And that's okay. But um, yeah, I, I, I love that so far. This is something that runs so fast. And I think this could be a good contender for a book that I could prioritize right away for a trip that I'm going on. So so between the two that I've read so far, I really think that Rosa Santos is coming out on top so far. So that is my uh, the first two books so far. I am going to take a break. That took a lot. And I'll probably read the other two tomorrow. And by the way, in case you were wondering, I don't wear a full face of makeup while I'm reading, lounging around the house. I filmed earlier today. So tomorrow, don't be shocked if I'm like makeup -less. But um, yeah, I will check in with you all tomorrow with the next two reads. Welcome to day two of my try a chapter tag. I really like to drag things out. So let's just go ahead and get started. Today, we are talking about with the fire on high and the night tiger. So I'm trying to decide which book I want to start with. I think that I'm going to start with the night tiger because I'm kind of in the mood for this. This looks very summery to me and I really want to give the night tiger a fighting chance. So let's try a chapter here. Welcome back. I have just finished reading the first actually four chapters because that was 20 pages of the night tiger. So there is a lot going on in this book. It's a dual perspective story. So there's Ren who uh, has a bit of mystery surrounding him because it starts actually in the 1930s and it skips to present day and Ren is still uh, 11 years old. And then the second perspective is G who is a dancer but she's very smart because she's uh, inclined to math. She likes math a lot and uh, she's also named uh, a name that is traditionally given to men and she's paying off these debts for her mother and she comes across this finger, the severed finger that Ren is looking for. So this book sounds very mysterious and somewhat magical. I feel like there's some magical things going on that aren't uh, fully explained yet, of course, but are going to play into that some way. So I'm really interested and the chapters are really short. There was four chapters in the first 20 pages. So that and how quickly it reads, I think make this a real contender for me to prioritize right away and take on a trip maybe even. So that is The Night Tiger. So now the last book I'm going to be reading with the fire on high now and starting uh, 20 pages at least in this. So let's see how that goes. All right, y'all. Well, I just finished reading the first 20 pages of With the Fire on High. And what do I think about this? So I really like it. It went by super fast. I think I read that in like 25 minutes, like super fast. If I thought that the Night Tiger went fast, this like flew by. And while I like it, I don't know if this is the right kind of book that I want to take on a plane. Um, this probably won't make any sense, but I feel like I just need 
the mystery that the night tiger has to really keep me lost in it and not as aware of my surroundings, if that makes any sense at all. But um, in terms of the, the fire on high, it, it sounds like it's going to be really good. And also I'm kind of mad because I haven't heard many people talking about the recipes in this. There are recipes. And why hasn't anyone mentioned that before? I don't know. But this is about Imani Santiago, who is a teenage mother. She lives with her grandmother, her abuela, and a baby girl is her daughter named Emma. There was a chapter about why she chose to name her Emma, which I feel so hard because a lot of people that have names that really are obviously non-white names tend to name their children whiter sounding names or white passing names to get them through life, to get them through the door without judgment. Uh, Resumes and uh, job applications, really pay attention to those sort of things. And she wants to give her daughter all the opportunity in the world. And I love that. And I love the chapter about the magic of cooking, how she started cooking with her grandmother. And I I know I'm going to get to this probably after I get back from my trip, but I don't think it's the right time right now. I don't think that... It's what I'm looking for. So so of the two that I just finished reading, I definitely think that the Night Tiger is going to take this round. So I only have two hands. So let's back up and look at all the four books and wrap up this video. Okay, so here are the four books and the order that I read them. If I were to order these and I guess the priority, I think that I'm going to be choosing the Night Tiger because that mystery element just really got me and that is going to let me fall into this story great as I'm traveling. Also the writing style just really got me in this and I really want to know what the Night Tiger is going to, how that's going to play into this too. So there's that. I think that Black Leopard Red Wolf is an easy one to move towards the end because I own it but also just the brain power that it takes to read this is a bit much for me at the moment. With the Fire and High and Don't Date Rosa Santos. Whoo, that's a tough one. But I really think that I'm gonna have to pick up Don't Date Rosa Santos next because, oh, the community aspect in that story is amazing. So Rosa is just like a wonderful main character to follow as she loves bullet journals, but also as she wants to like understand her culture more. And I really feel that. So I think that I'm gonna have to pick up this next and then with the Fire on High. What do y'all think? So that was my try a chapter tag. I hope that you enjoyed it. I am doing this outro formally beforehand in case I forget to do it later because I tend to do that. But um, please let me know if you had similar thoughts to me while reading these books. If uh, you think that I chose correctly, if I should prioritize something else or not. Uh, Let me know all that good stuff in the comments down below. But that is all I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye.